Between socialist Russia and the revolutionary West, a partition wall has been erected in the shape of the occupied regions. Whereas in Russia the red flag has been waving for over a year now, and in the West, in Germany and Austria-Hungary, outbreaks of proletarian uprisings are multiplying daily and hourly, in the occupied regions, in Finland, Estland, Latvia, Lithuania, Bielorussia, Poland, Bessarabia, the Ukraine and the Crimea, bourgeois nationalist governments continue to drag out a wretched existence by the grace of the imperialists of the West whose time is coming to an end. Whereas in the East and in the West, great monarchs and sovereign imperialists have already been relegated to the nether regions, in the occupied areas petty kinglets and puny robbers continue to rule, committing lawlessness and violence against the workers and peasants, arresting and shooting them. More, these out-of-date governments are feverishly organizing their national white guard regiments, are preparing for action, are conspiring with the not yet abolished imperialist governments and laying plans for the expansion of their territories. These shadows, rotting alive of already overthrown great monarchs and these puny national governments, which have been placed by the will of fate between the two tremendous conflagrations of revolution in the East and in the West, are now dreaming of extinguishing the general fire of revolution in Europe, of perpetuating their ludicrous existence, of turning back the wheel of history. That which the sovereign monarchs of Great Germany and Austria-Hungary failed to accomplish, these petty kinglets dream of accomplishing at one stroke, with the help of a couple of disorganized white guard regiments. We do not doubt that the mighty waves of revolution in Russia and the West will ruthlessly sweep away the counter-revolutionary dreamers in the occupied regions. We do not doubt that the hour is near when the kinglets of these regions will follow in the footsteps of their former sovereign patrons in Russia and Germany. We have no reason to doubt that the counter-revolutionary partition wall between the revolutionary West and socialist Russia will in the end be swept away. The first signs of revolution in the occupied regions have already appeared. The strikes in Estland, the demonstrations in Latvia, the general strike in the Ukraine, the universal revolutionary ferment in Finland, Poland and Latvia, all these are the first signs. Needless to say, revolution in Soviet governments in these regions are matters of the very near future. Proletarian revolution, awe-inspiring and mighty, is on the march through the world. The old, lords of the earth in the east and the west bend their heads before it in fear and trembling, and their old crowns are falling. The occupied regions in their petty kinglets can be no exception.